Is this the ultimate Garrett model? And will it run on my layout? Hey guys, welcome. Or welcome back to Proper Chuffed. My name is Hilton and uh, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. That is half the fun of this, isn't it? If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy this content and if you do, please consider subscribing. That would be a great help. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back guys. It's good to see you again and let's get on with the show. So this week we're coming back across the pond all the way to Africa to look at a South African locomotive and a rather special one at that. South Africa has a numerous classes of steam locomotives, some of which are still in operation today. And one of the very special ones and the one that's always sort of held, I've held closest to my heart is the Garrett. Garrett's are incredibly powerful, unique locomotives. They're often known as double mountains and usually have two swiveling bogies, both of which are powered and steam driven. Garrett's have been shipped far and wide from as far as Australia and New Zealand, and of course to Africa. In Africa, Garrett's have served incredibly well as very powerful mainline steam locomotives that have been able to navigate the tight twists and turns and steeper gradients that the African continent is sort of known for. In South Africa, we have a great history with the Garrett's. They've been powering mainline freight and passenger services across the country for many, many years, all the way up until the late 80s, actually. Before I begin, I just want to touch on the South African railway modeling scene. And that is exclusively modeling South African stuff specifically. So unless you're an expat or, you know, a South African, you probably have not much interest in modeling South African. And that's because there's probably not that much available on the market. Um, personally, I think that South African rolling stock and wagons and stuff like that are not very interesting. They're not, they're not super colorful or anything. I find them kind of boring. Um, but there are obviously the locomotives that power these trains that that really have always captured my imagination since a, since a very young age. In the 1970s and 80s, Lima made a massive push into the South African market with no, numerous sort of like starter sets to get kids going and the market was essentially flooded with Lima models. Now, I don't know how you feel about Lima, um, let me know in the comments, <laughs> but um, I find Lima's, obviously they, they're great runners usually, However, their detail levels are just not quite there. So very often the sort of diesel lemurs that were brought into South Africa based on SAR sort of rolling stock and, and locomotives, they're, they're, they're okay. <laughs> uh, actually, weirdly enough, I think Locomotion Motion reviewed one of these recently and I was quite surprised to see a SAR uh, diesel on his channel. But, you know, the detail's not there. So a lot of South African modelers sort of take to sort of um, kit bashing these original kits and making them, I suppose, a little bit more authentic and lifelike. Another problem we have is the gauge. Obviously, we use Cape gauge here in South Africa in, in real world terms. So the Lima models are essentially HO, uh, which is not prototypically correct. Um, but I think most South African modelers kind of ignore that. There are a few guys who actually do do Cape gauge to scale, which I think is like 12.5 mils or so. Um, it's very narrow basically um, because we have such twi tight twisty um, like hills and, and, and inclines and, and so sorts of things in South Africa. I think it, it makes it a little bit difficult to get exactly Cape gauge versions of South African locomotives. Point is, it's hard to get South African steam specifically. You've got the Lima diesels, which are readily available and you know, sell for a fair bit of money in this country, secondhand even. But steam is another story in itself. Um, there are very few manufacturers of South African steam. One of these being Precision Miniatures. Precision Miniatures bought the tooling for a numerous sort of South African steam locomotives from DJH, who are based in the UK. Uh, and have been producing these locomotives to order, I suppose. These aren't cheap. They're pretty damn expensive, unfortunately. And if you're looking at getting something like a GMAM Garrett with sound and smoke and all the bells and whistles that you would expect, you're looking at about 1,200 to 1,300 pounds, uh, which is no, <laughs> no mean feat. <laughs> there are other sort of suppliers of South African steam. One I think is called Miniature World. Uh, they're based in George in the Western Cape of South Africa. Uh, they produce a sort of more affordable version of South African steam locomotives. They produce 
uh, the Red Devil, which is a quite a nice locomotive. I've not actually seen one of these models in person, so I'm not at any sort of like, I can't really comment on, on the quality or, or how they run, but I understand that numerous South African modelers sort of turn to these guys. Anyways, I've sort of discussed that for long enough now. Uh, let's move on to the main show today. Um, I had a very special model here. I paid about a thousand pounds for this. Yeah, uh, it was not cheap. But my reasoning was this, you know, if I do decide to do a South African mod model like layout one day, I've got the Garrett. I'm not sure I'm going to keep it, to be honest with you though, because I don't know when I'm going to have time to build a South African layout. And also where I stay is not a permanent situation. I'm obviously renting and I already have this massive layout that I'm building now. And I don't think I'll have any more space to build a South African one. So I'm a bit up in the air as to whether I keep it or, or move it on. I know that if I sell it, I'll be able to get exactly what I paid for back because it's such a sought after piece of South African Railways sort of modeling. Um, but I thought it would be really special to take a look at it today with you guys. Um, I know that in the UK, you obviously had the LMS Garrett's and you had the U1 from the LNER, but Garrett's are a fairly unique and novel idea within the UK space. So we're gonna take a look at the real kings of the Garrett's today. Let's take a look at Precision Miniatures GMAM Garrett. Right, so this is what you get in a South African model or South African produced model, I should say. This is the Precision Miniatures packaging. Um, as you can see, it's a very clean and smart packaging set. Um, on the box, we've got Precision Miniatures logo, which represents the South African Railways, or Site Afrikaans Spurvia, which is the Afrikaans term for the South African Railways. SAS was the original sort of name plating that was used on locomotives. So you have this beautiful clean box, um, sort of reminiscent of the more modern stuff we see from uh, Hornby and Bachmann and the like. Um, quite, quite elegant and quite smart on your shelf, I would say. Um, but here, let's get inside the box and see what's going on. Um, very clean and smart packaging. Um, bear in mind, I picked this locomotive up secondhand, so obviously it didn't have quite all the bits and bobs that I, I assume would be with it. I'm not sure if Precision Miniatures actually include a manual with their locomotives, but I certainly didn't get one. And obviously had to do a little bit of like chatting to other South African railway modelers who kind of know these Garrett's and, and get a bit more information on, you know, how to service and, and look after these beautiful things. Um, okay, so inside there's no clamshell or anything like that. Um, the locomotive is packaged inside this foam and then this fits snugly inside the recess that's included here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the two ends and just pull it out gently from both sides and place it down. I'm not sure if the original sort of packaging comes with the clamshell, but this is what we have. And here's our Garrett, an absolutely beautiful HO model and full metal, <laughs> which I think is just magnificent. Every single part of this locomotive is made from some kind of metal. Um, and that is just, um, it's stunning to see the detail here when you look a little bit closer. So I think what I'm going to do is we can take a quick look here from this angle. So this is a 482-284 wheel arrangement or double mountain as some people refer to it, but we call it Garrett, you know. Um, this particular locomotive, number 4139, was produced by Bayer Peacock. Um, as some were produced by Henschel, I believe, but it was brought to South Africa in 1958, particular locomotive. This particular locomotive is a GM AM Garrett. So you've got your water tank on the front here and your coal bunker at the back. Um, and I think they are just the coolest looking Garretts of all of the ones produced. I think they really have a sense of purpose when they're running on the lines, they just look absolutely magnificent and they are obviously so powerful. I believe the most powerful Garrett was actually produced by Bayer Peacock for the Soviet Union. I've not actually seen photos of that Garrett as much as I've tried to find photos. But second to that, this is the most powerful Garrett that was produced. Um, so it's, it's quite a, an awesome thing to have it here on the layout. One of the things I will just take note of, I don't wanna move this around too much. Garrett's are always quite scary to rotate is that this has knuckle couplers. 
so obviously I don't have any stock that will will run with this so today I'll be testing and reviewing this without any rolling stock um, and it's got some cow catchers and some beautiful hand fine metal handrails all over the locomotive um, there's just there's so much detail here you can see why they're worth what they are but I think what we'll do now is we'll take a closer look at the GMAM a uh, little bit of history and and then get to some running with this this beautiful beautiful piece of machinery <laughs> The Garrett locomotive was developed by British engineer Herbert William Garrett in the early 20th century. It featured an articulated design with two sets of powered wheels on separate frames connected by a boiler in the center. This design offered improved flexibility and traction, making it suitable for the challenging terrain of many colonial railway networks, including South Africa. The Class GMA and mainline Class GMAM Garrett locomotive, collectively referred to as a single class, represented a progression from the earlier large class GM branch line locomotives, which was debuted on the South African Railways in 1938. Similar to the Class GM, the Class GMA was a tank and tender Garrett configuration, accompanied by semi-permanently coupled auxiliary water tender to enhance its limited water capacity. The locomotive's design was initiated in 1952 under the guidance of L.C. Grubb, who served as Chief Mechanical Engineer of South African Railways from 1949 to 1954. A contract was awarded to Henschel & Son in Germany for the production of the initial 25 locomotives. Manufactured in 1953, these locomotives were delivered and put into operation in 1954, designated with numbers ranging from 4051 to 4075. The GMA was a further development of normal Garrett's, specifically tailored for South Africa's requirements. It was a larger and more powerful version of its predecessors, featuring its improvements in boiler capacity, tractive effort, and overall performance. A second batch was built by Bayer Peacock & Company, a renowned locomotive manufacturer based in Manchester. Production began in the late 1950s with the first locomotives then entering service in the early 1960s. The GMA Garrett was a massive locomotive weighing around 254 tons and measuring over 22 meters in length. It was powered by two separate sets of cylinders driving the wheels on each articulated frame, giving it exceptional traction and haulage capacity. The locomotive was primarily designed for freight service, but it could handle passenger trains when necessary. The Garrett's were primarily deployed on SAR's mainline routes, hauling heavy freight trains across vast distances. They were particularly well suited for the challenging gradients and curves encountered in South Africa's diverse terrain, including mountainous regions and desert landscapes. Like many other countries, however, South Africa gradually transitioned from steam to diesel and electric traction in the 1970s and 80s. However, steam locomotives, including the GMAs, continued to see service in some areas, especially on branch lines and industrial areas, well into the 1980s. Despite the decline of steam traction in regular service, several GMAM locomotives have been preserved and restored by railway enthusiasts and heritage organizations in South Africa. The GMA Garrett played a vital role in the history of South African railways, serving as a reliable workhorse on the country's extensive railway networks and leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of railway enthusiasts worldwide. Commanding presence. That would be the sort of description I would use for GMAM Garrett's. They are such imposing creatures on the lines, uh, real steam dragons, if you will. There is so much detail to go over here. The fidelity of this model is very impressive and bearing in mind that this is all made of a white metal or brass combination. This locomotive weighs in at a whopping 681 grams, which is very, very heavy indeed, especially for an HO scale locomotive. Every single part of this is metal. So there's no skipping of, you know, plastic parts here. Everything that has been put onto this is, is really adding to that weight and, and pushing it down onto the track. It's quite a behemoth. Looking at the leading tender, as well as the sort of main driving wheels from the front, obviously you can see there's a lot of engineering that's gone into this entire configuration and every single part being metal makes it a little bit difficult to sort of get inside and figure out re what's really going on without being able to remove sort of like plastic pieces as you normally would. I do see a problem, however, that leading pony truck, I don't think is going to make my third radius curves. Um, I, the sort of stipulation on Precision and Miniatures website is that this needs to have a minimum of 700 millimeters radius, which I believe is fourth or fifth, somewhere in there. 
in that line and my layout is third radius at its largest so I don't see how this is going to make it but uh, we are yet to see how that sort of plays out. Regardless this is an incredibly detailed little locomotive and you know just touching every single part here you can feel it's all metal and that's just a beautiful thing. There's so many differently separately fitted handrails and ladders it seems that the paint on some of these has probably worn off over the years. Um, you can see there on the ladder next to the the boiler that there's a little bit of gold showing through and it does seem that the paint has faded ever so slightly. Looking at the middle section of the locomotive, the boiler, you can see there again the paint is fading a little bit on that ladder. But regardless, there are so many sort of turned brass pieces that have been attached to this pipe work all over this locomotive. I'm so impressed with the smoke box door. There's so much going on there. It's such an iconic sort of South African look, having that gray smoke box area with the black behind it. It's a very unique looking color scheme that our locomotives have always held and I've always admired them quite a bit for it. Unfortunately, the top of the chimney exhaust is sort of sealed off. There's actually no full opening there, which does look a little bit odd when you're looking at it from up above, but from this angle, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> um, but there's there's just an impressive amount of, of work that goes into these model kits. I'm so impressed and I can see why they hold their value as they do. Looking at the rear tender here, we get a little bit of a better view inside the cab. Now, this is something I actually didn't really look at too closely but under closer inspection with the camera I can see that there are obviously separately fitted parts inside the cab itself which have been painted. Um, there's the reverser that you can see inside the cab there and again just so many little small intricate details in this model. I'm so impressed with it. There's not as much riveting work as I expected there would be but bear in mind that this is a tooling from the sort of 80s this is a fairly old one, um, but it's in incredible condition. And again, just having a full metal locomotive makes all the difference. The weight and the power is impressive. On the side of the locomotive, we can see a little bit closer here, the safety valves, as well as the locomotive building plate 4139. We also get a better view of the ash pan underneath the locomotive and the firebox. And you can see there again, sort of the, some of the paint that has sort of been fading away over the years that sort of white metal brass that is sort of showing through at the bottom there. This locomotive is actually driven only by one motor. I believe the more modern versions of Precision Miniatures tooling of the GMAM is actually powered on both sides. A little bit of a problem though, I don't see where I can fit DCC into this. I don't see a way of getting inside that motor housing without basically breaking up the loco locomotive or the sort of solders that have put it all together. That's a bit of a problem for me. I don't want to mess with something like this. I don't want to fit it with DCC. So I'm gonna have to run it as a DC loco on my layout just for the sake of this review. I mean, really, what is not to like about this locomotive? Every single part has been fitted so well and so cleanly. There's nothing that seems out of place or slightly bent here. It's all straight lines, clean seams. Everything about it seems beautifully, beautifully engineered. I am absolutely blown away with the level of quality that's come through here. I'm very curious to see now how it runs. So here she is then, the Garrett on track. I'm quite excited, quite a moment for me to have something like this on my layout. I think it's very special. I feel almost quite honored, even though I'm the one who paid the money for the damn thing. Um, but I'm quite curious to see how this navigates the layout. Um, there are a couple things that right off the bat I'm a little bit worried about and I think the first of which is probably whether it can handle my radii. Somehow I feel like it won't, but let's put it to work and see what happens. As a side note, you might notice that the layout is sort of coming qu along fairly quickly. Uh, you might see some new details and the baseboard has been painted. I will be posting an update very soon on where I'm at with all of that. Um, but for now, let's just focus on the, the Garrett. Off the bat here, I'm obviously running on DC power, not DCC, because I simply wouldn't know how to fit a decoder to this thing. And I'm far too scared to open it up. But as you can see, really smooth running 
the entire gearing system seems to be very very well done obviously it's only taking power from the one tender side uh, as opposed to something like Helgen's Garrett which has double motors on each end this is obviously driven only on the one side through the coal bunker with a little motor there but it seems fairly powerful I mean for a 681 gram locomotive to be moving this smoothly under under the, just the power of one motor this is a very strong little thing uh, there seems to be quite a lot of sort of tractive power going through the, that little motor and obviously all the gearing is is made of full metal as well of course they didn't skimp on that either so good job the running is smooth up and down both ways and at different speeds but i seem to be coming across an issue where the inside bogies those being the bogies that are directly under the boiler area seem to keep jumping off the rails and now this is my railing is pretty pretty flat pretty solid i would say i uh, haven't had any other issues with other locomotives but these two bogies seem to jump off quite a bit their flanges are, are not exactly very deep which is fine that's totally and in fact more accurate but the fact that these bogies seem to jump out quite easily is quite frustrating and i have to find myself stopping the loco re-railing the entire thing before continuing running. And so here's the moment of truth. Can this Garrett navigate my third radius curves? And as much as it pains me to say so, it can't, um, I don't think. It seems that the front bogey keeps touching up against the side of the cylinders and then as a result causes a short because every single part of this locomotive is metal and seems to be conducting through each other. So the problem is, as soon as it gets to a certain point in the radius, that front bogey is tapping against the inside of the cylinder and then shorting the entire thing out, which is very unfortunate. I've tried to sort of insulate that front cylinder with you know some electrical tape just on the inside of the cylinder. And while it does run a little bit further, unfortunately it still stops um, because there's not enough rotation on that front bogey to allow it to, to make that curve. So it's a it's sort of, I won't lie, it's actually a bit heartbreaking. I was kind of hoping to at least get one loop out of this thing. That would have been great. Um, but I kind of expected it. I almost knew this was coming. And as a result, like, I, look, this locomotive wasn't bought for this layout specifically. The idea was that it would fit into a South African layout at a later point, something that I would, I would love to do. But the reality is it does need larger radius curves. Uh, you're going to have a massive issue with this. If you've got a layout that has third or, or smaller, I would say you probably need to go with the suggested seven, 700 millimeter curve. But there's no denying just how beautiful this thing is. <laughs> I mean, it's got, I'm like 50-50 on it. Like it's frustrating to run because, you know, the flanges are not that deep and the bogey seems to jump and it obviously can't make the curves. But at the same time, watching it go up and down, at least the straight section of my line is breathtaking it's mesmerizing it has just so much presence it's so commanding it's, it's such a real looker i'm just gobsmacked at just how good this thing looks and how smoothly it runs when it's running on a straight line that must be said uh, the gearing is incredibly smooth and very robust um, there seem to be no problems whatsoever moving all 681 grams of this locomotive forward and backward uh, without any need for traction tires or anything like that. It is so, so strong. And I can only imagine that the newer versions that have two motors on them are real beasts. This one alone is, is impressive enough to me. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think it's an absolutely exquisite locomotive. The detail is there, but the tooling is old. And the fact that I can't fit DCC into it add lights, I mean, I could, um, but it would probably be a pretty expensive endeavor. And I think the really crippling factor of a locomotive like this in particular, is the fact that it can't handle a third radius. 70 millimeters is a wide curve and certainly nothing that on my layout has 70 millimeters of curve. So I, I actually can't run it around the layout, which is really frustrating. Um, and it was sort of bittersweet because I'd been waiting to get this for such a long time finally got it, put it on the track. I kind of knew that it would have issues, 
but um, the fact that you know it basically shorts every time it starts taking a curve on my layout was really disheartening I must say I was very upset by the fact that this money that I've put into this locomotive um, is basically for nothing other than the review factor which is great don't get me wrong I'm like I'm super happy to share this with you it's a magnificent piece of machinery but I, I do think that there were some some things that could be changed with this I, I suppose one of the things would be to handle wider radiuses perhaps we could insulate the the pistons on both sides so that the front bogey doesn't catch it and short it or just have you know i don't know maybe a little bit more plastic built around that whole front section and rear section of of each of the the two tenders of the garret might make a bit more sense so that you can navigate those curves there are a couple guys who have sort of retrofitted some changes to make that possible but then it sort of takes away the prototypical nature of the machine so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a contentious point i suppose like do you do you adjust it do you make a difference so that it can run on the layout and i'm not sure what i want to do to be honest do i do i want to keep this uh it's a dc locomotive i could go for dcc i'm not sure um it's a weird one but here we are um i hope you enjoyed the review and if you did please drop me a thumbs up this is certainly one of the most unique ones I've done and I thought it would be really nice to just share a bit of South African Railways modeling with you guys. I'll be back to the British stuff next week, don't you worry. If you enjoyed this video, drop me a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated and uh, until I see you next time, keep your engines fired and stay on track. All the best.